will never reduce the amount of illness, mental or physical, in this country until we bring in the sharper focus, true health and happiness. And flourishing is the term I've used now to, to make it very clear and that I've developed scientifically to really bring into, I hope, sharper focus the nature of what good mental health really is all about and what I think we really need to prioritize. When we're teaching our students, we should prioritize flourishing. Students should end their academic career at a place as Emory. More, more, flourish, more of them should be flourishing than started, not the obverse. So, flourishing, where does it come from, right? We're supposed to hear, we're here to talk about happiness, huh? You know, uh, well, it turns out flourishing, at least scientifically, borrows very deeply from two kinds of happiness that have been talked about by the ancients, by the religious community and scholars for years. We tend to think of happiness only in the first tradition, and that is happiness is about feeling emotion. It's about feeling good. This goes all the way back to Epicurus, a uh, great uh, Greek philosopher, who said, if you want to be happy, you need to surround yourself with friends, freedom, front encumbrances, and time for reflection when things go wrong. He had a very simple formula for feeling good. But this comes from the hedonic, Greek hedonic uh, tradition of, of happiness, which is to say, maximize pleasure, which is a term meant to refer to maximize good feeling. Utilitarians, you know probably very well, have made a great philosophy out of maximizing happiness in this tradition. What we tend to forget is there's a second tradition of happiness, and that is happiness is functioning up to a level of excellence. This comes from none other than Aristotle. And he had a term for happiness, and he called it eudaimonia, you for good and daemon, to find that true spirit that is you and develop it 